and welcome to the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting of Hopkinton for, what, what's the date? March 4th. <laughs> um, so today, um, I wanted to uh, review some of the kind of action items that we left from last meeting, and as well as going through um, the Planning Board public hearing that was held last Monday, um, and just give you updates on the zoning bylaws. Some of you were there. Um, uh, so, but just to give you an update. So I'll start with that. Um, there were several zoning articles discussed on Monday, February 25th. The Planning Board held a public hearing. And um, I'll just go through one by one what the outcome was thus far. Um, so the temporary banners, as you may recall, we had proposed um, a larger size and we had proposed changing the maximum days from 14 to 30. And we also proposed um, allowing them on all public ways. So um, the planning board did vote to send this one to town meeting. However, they made some minor changes. They wanted to keep the maximum at 14 days instead of 30. And they, uh, they specified which streets would have banners. So it wasn't citywide, townwide. Um, I don't know if you remember which streets were designated. So, um, so yeah, it was probably a lot of the things that we were discussing, you know, here. Um, Planning Board just decided to make those changes for the warrant. Uh, the next one is the commercial solar voltaic installations. We had made some minor um, wording changes to, uh, to talk about the screening. Uh, the effective year-round screening was the only wording we um, changed. And um, Planning Board decided to uh, continue it until their next public hearing on March 25th. And uh, primarily that was due to wanting to look at additional wording to add to this. Um, again, Elaine or any other members who were there, do you remember specifics about the, the wording that they wanted to add? I on had the, some notes, but. On the photovoltaic? On the, yeah, solar, solar pumps. It was a, it was a big discussion about yeah. from where we were looking and from what we were shielding and. So there was some talk about there's there's a term whenever reasonable structures should be shielded from view by etc and there was a discussion about striking that phrase um, and um, but town council was saying we should be much more specific and not make it a subjective um, but the whole the whole paragraph you know even though we added just one small small phrase um, the whole paragraph is fairly subjective and, and not very specific. So it would mean rewriting a great deal of the existing bylaw um, to, uh, to go with that. So um, they, d uh, they did talk about adding earth berming to the last sentence. So methods such as the use of landscaping, natural features, and fencing may, may be utilized. They also wanted to add earth berming as a specific item. Um, which, uh, which you know, just is just a clarification more than anything. Um, and other than that, was there anything else, Elaine? Nothing specific. Okay. So, so anyhow, that was continued to the next public hearing on March 25th, which you're all encouraged to attend. Um, let's see. Educational uses in Industrial A, Industrial B, and Professional Office Districts. As you know, because of the Dover Amendment, Educational uses are allowed everywhere, anyhow. Um, but because of that, planning board voted to remove it from the warrant. So they're not going to go forward with that. They just felt it wasn't necessary to put that in our bylaws. And didn't want to put it on me. Yep. <laughs> uh, indoor recreational uses in industrial A and B districts. Uh, planning board voted to send it to town meeting. However, they changed um, part of it. Uh, and they made it by special permit, not by right. So, um, the accessory retail to manufacturing use in industrial A and industrial B district. 
um, planning board did vote to send that to town meeting but with uses allowed by special permit um, and there were just some minor minor town council wording changes as well so um, again just changing a lot of the things from by right to special permit um, restaurants in industrial B district um, it is I don't know if this is if I have the notes correct <coughs> okay so we had proposed um, changing it to a by right not by special permit and they voted that down so they're not going to send that to, to to town meeting so it is still allowed by special permit that is the way it is in the bylaws right now car wash uses um, there was a lot of discussion about the car wash um, including about how to correctly word the sustainable um, uh, use you know water use and electrical use and um, and there was also discussion about removing it from the downtown business district because you know there was a lot of a lot of thought that we wouldn't <coughs> want a car wash to end up there anyhow and maybe industrial a is the better place for it which is what you know we were proposing to add as a as a possibility um but it has been continued to march 25th public hearing so it hasn't been voted on yet um and i believe part of the reason to continue it was for you to determine whether or not it, it could it, they could add that much of a change they could add the downtown business district removal as well as the the current warrant so okay um, okay the Osmond overlay district this is this has has to do with um, restricted land use <sighs> very complicated legal thing um, they wanted to um, specifically allow cultural educational uses so we would be able to put the um, a, a museum on a particular plot of land that's um, that's being um, designated as restricted land um, and because the current you know, the current writing of the bylaw doesn't necessarily allow that on restricted land so um, so that's what they did was um, they did vote to send it to town meeting but they changed the wording so it's only cultural uses not educational uses um, again that was probably to clarify it so it wouldn't be used for a school I think that was just them appeasing my paranoia oh yeah <laughs> because right before that it says you can use it for municipal uses which would allow which would school. allow schools <laughs> yeah I, just, I think they were just trying to appease me <laughs> Because it didn't make any difference whether it was <laughs> cultural, educational, or just yeah. cultural. Okay, and then the um, the two the two um, proposals regarding um, the Osma district regarding senior housing development. We talked about age restriction versus you know um, uh, the affordable housing that they need to supply. All of that has been. That actually was never on the agenda for the two, for 225. It's it's going to be discussed on March 25th at that public hearing, um, and so is the one about the um, live-in managers at the assisted living facility in the Osmond Overlay District, and that will be discussed on March 25th. And finally, the self-storage facilities that we did not vote for, but was sponsored as a citizens' petition. Um, will be discussed at the March 25th public hearing. The sponsor was not in attendance at the time we got to it on the agenda on, on February 25th. Okay. Any questions, comments? No? All right. In addition, two citizens' petitions have been put forward, which will also be discussed on March 25th, I believe. Um, and these have to do with growth restrictions or phasing in town um, the the two were I'm I, I don't know exactly um, why the two were done separately but but nonetheless here's the the differences between the two one the first one is a one-year duration and it applies to all new dwelling units um, and um, it essentially would restrict the number of building permits 
that could be done in town during that one year um, from to 12 new dwelling units and no more than two per applicant so it couldn't be one development comes in and does 12 and uses up all the the available slots it was based on a similar bylaw from the t town of Northfield which um, was passed in 2013 um, and there's going to be I'm sure extensive discussion on March 25th and again I encourage you all to attend if you can on March 25th the second citizens petition um, has is a three-year duration and it applies only to larger developments so subdivisions garden apartments village housing it's uh, not quite as restrictive in the sense that it says no more than 10 building permits for dwelling units in any 12-month period per large development so it's 10 per developer essentially that's how I understand it at this point so and there's of course exemptions grandfathering you know for, for um, housing or, or building permits that have already been passed and and approved and so on so do you have any questions about those any comments okay so and um, hi John we've just been catching up on what the Planning Board did last week with our proposals and with other proposals um, before them and then the citizens petitions that came through I just wanted I was just giving an update to people okay uh, so next on the agenda and this is mostly Elaine to talk us through these these are the spreadsheets on population occupation and commuting practices of the people in town um, so this is the uh, first few pages after the agenda in your packet um, so could you walk us through this in terms of you know what we can learn from it You know what the characteristics of Hopkinton residents are as far as what people do for a living, what industries they work in, mm -hmm. and commuting uh, information. So uh, what I provided was information from the Census Bureau. It's part of their five-year update. So um, what they uh, they project uh, is that in uh, basically it's 2017. And they're saying, as far as occupations go, um, the majority of people in town are working in management, business, science, and arts occupations, which is a huge, a huge group. Um, as opposed to the remainder of the occupations are service occupations, sales and office, natural resources, and production and transportation. So I suppose it's no surprise that most people are located in, in that really large group that includes management, business, computer, engineering, education, legal, health care. So there's a lot of people in that group. So that's what most people in town do for their occupation. And then the second uh, grouping is the industries that people are working in. So in that instance, they project that the number one industry that most residents are working in is um, educational services and health care and social assistance. So that would be 26 and a half percent of people. So that's the biggest group as uh, working in that, which basically is educational services and healthcare and social assistance is where most people are concentrating their occupation. The second largest group was professional, scientific, and management, and administrative and waste management. And then the third group was, um, was construction. It was the third group. No, manufacturing. Oh, manufacturing, sorry. No. Yeah, manufacturing. Okay. So I don't know if that provided the additional information you were looking for, but that's typically where people are are working. So these this is Hopkinton residents. Hopkinton residents. Um, act, uh, they are they are employed residents over sixteen. Yes. Yep. Or sixteen and over. Okay.
Do you have a Hopkinton unemployment rate? Uh, I didn't look that up, but I can quickly do that while you're while you're here. I can look that up. Can you? The state publishes those, I think, monthly. By town? Uh, pretty close. So I can look and see. I can okay. find that. Thanks. And um, this number we have eighty six sixty three. And then on the other one, it's approximately the same. 80, yeah, it's 8663 on the both of them. So this um, is civilian population 16 and over that's employed. That's employed. So do we have a number of the total adults are in that category? So we know ones that aren't employed, not unemployed, but not employed. Uh, that could be at a future meeting. We can get yeah. more demographic okay. information. But yeah, OK. Yeah. I was thinking eligible voters or something like that. Probably, well, that wouldn't be 16 and over, but that would be 18 and over. So, <clears throat> do you know the eligible voter number just no. off the top of your head? No. Okay. Well, eligible voters would be people 18 and over who are citizens mm -hmm. and uh, town clerk. Whether or not they're employed. Town clerk could probably provide that information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Any questions on the employment piece? So, why were we pulling these? We discussed it uh, as part of the this matrix of you know really un trying to understand where people are working and and um, and I wasn't the one who asked the question, but um, but does anyone else remember precisely why? I'm trying to figure out how this how this fits into zoning. Not sure. <clears throat> oh, okay. Right. I get, oh, you know. Bear with me for a second. I seem to remember <laughs> that it was based on understanding where people are working now in the sense of industries and so on, and how, therefore, if we, if theoretically, if we could, if we targeted those types of companies or industries, then we could actually employ people in this town to work in the town. Does that ring a bell? Does that seem like it was some, so it was, it was more along those lines. It was like, what's the ideal situation? Nobody has to commute more than five minutes, right? <laughs> and so that um, it would be great if we would be able to employ our own residents in this town. I think that was the, the theory of educating ourselves a little bit more on the statistics. All right. Okay. All right, and then you also have a chart, uh, U.S. Census Bureau, about um, commuting, commuting behavior. So most people commute by car, truck, or van, and they do it by themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and they're in their car or van for a long time. I think this is the average um, travel time to work. I think most people in Huffington, the largest group, it's an hour or more. Yep. I didn't understand. There's something on the second page of the, of the spreadsheet, the chart part, that says living in a place. Worked in place of residence, worked outside place of residence. I understand that part is, is working at home or not. Um, but living, in, I don't understand what living in a place means. <laughs> yeah, it may be a census place. Because they're saying that 9% of residents are working at home. Right. A but a census? The Census Bureau has, they, they have um, place. There's a place is a specific kind of unit that they measure. So, for example, Hopkinton may be a place, or the center of Hopkinton may be a place. So I don't know if that's what they're, what they're getting at. Oh, okay. Okay. And then the next category, living in 12 selected states. Massachusetts was one of those 12 selected states. So, so of course, Hopkinton residents are 100% in the 12 selected states. Worked in minor civil division of residents. Do you have any idea what that means? No. OK. I'd have to look up the definition of civil yeah. division. OK. That sounds fine. Thank you. Because <laughs> I didn't know what it meant either. <laughs> But, um, but back to the first page, it does say worked in county of residence, 55%. So 55% of people in Hopkinton in this particular survey worked in the county. So. Yeah, but, county. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Big we're, county. We're yeah, this one out. Yeah, exactly. Big county. So 
but that's about as close as we get from this particular data. It eliminates Boston, though. Yeah, and that's Worcester. Suffolk. Yeah, Suffolk and Worcester. Yeah. And the mean travel time is you know, 37 minutes. Yep. Time to work one way. Yeah, long commutes. Mm -hmm. And mostly alone. That's right. <laughs> so, um, okay. So we're going to next move into our matrix, which I am going to go over to the other computer for. Um, so today we wanted to finalize the way that we have it laid out. I'll wait until I'm over it in the microphone. So it's on the floor. Okay. So what we wanted to do today is uh, finalize how we're doing this um, in terms of the, num the businesses that are listed, the business categories that are listed, and the, um, the attributes across the, the top. Um, and then um, Ted and I were talking just before the meeting, too, and that he was, you know, dabbling with this and trying to, you know, work on how he would fill this out and realize that he had some questions about how it would work. <laughs> um, and perhaps, yeah, and that's, you know, this is, this is, this is just a consensus of the people in this room, obviously, but, um, but hopefully we'll, you know, uh, lend us some, some information um, along the lines of the, the zoning that we have in town. But, but um, clearly, you know, if people have particular knowledge of certain industries, it might be very helpful to hear from those people in this room and give us more information on that as well. Okay. So the uh, business categories that we have right now, manufacturing, assembly, and processing. Um, think about this as we go through them, whether or not we would want to divide those into um, smaller categories, separate out certain types of businesses, or not. Okay. And then warehousing and distribution, laboratory research centers, office general, so kind of things that don't fit into, you know, anything else. Uh, daycare, funeral home, Building trade shop, which is defined very thoroughly in our bylaws if you want to look for the definition. Hospitals and clinics, including inpatient services, or health and health services, which includes medical, dental, and chiropractic offices, outpatient only. Um, landscaping business, which is primarily a storage and staging area, because of course landscaping is done at other properties. Retail service, retail sales, retail food markets. We have not defined size on food markets because you know that, that again is, is something that we could separate out if we wanted to, to separate uh, like a small market from a supermarket. Museum, entertainment, like theaters, clubs, concert halls. Health club, indoor sports, recreational uses indoor and recreational uses outdoor. Um, restaurant, hotel, and that's separate from inn or B&B, &B, which is up to 12 rooms as defined in our bylaws currently. A place of assembly or worship, educational facility, charity, philanthropic organization. Here I'm thinking example, of course project just because. Um, car wash, gas station, auto repair and maintenance, automotive sales new versus used, automotive rental facility, Oops. self storage, doggy daycare, animal shelter, animal boarding. Um, I don't know these are pretty pretty much the same um, but but there's by nature for instance I think by nature an animal shelter and animal boarding would have outdoor activities for dogs so um, so keep that in mind when you know 
thinking about the noise and you know other things that would affect a neighborhood. Veterinary office or animal hospital, uh, conference center, recycling center, hazardous waste processing center, communications facilities. This, I believe, we defined last time as um, this could include cell towers, or it could include other um, structures that have primarily equipment inside of it. Um, Um, energy plant, granite quarry, or any stone quarry. You know, it doesn't have to be granite. Asphalt, asphalt plant. <laughs> um, oh, that's, yes, I added the agricultural uses, yes, and I forgot to delete that note. <laughs> Slaughterhouse, agricultural, horticultural, floriculture, viticulture, which is, again, in, from our bylaws. Woodlots, portable woodworking mills and machinery. Portable? Okay. Sawmill. How does that differ? From which one? Sawmill versus woodlots with portable woodworking mills and machinery. Sawmills are usually permanent. <clears throat> okay. that's, so that's why I just made that's why you had that's them why separated. You, okay. Yeah. I would I, interpret the other as like moving your chipper to a site. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. That would be my Got interpretation. Okay. And then riding stables, I put in. Um, thinking commercial riding stables versus somebody who has horses at their home for their personal use which is kind of and some if i may it, some some may not be commercial this educational too that's we they used to have that down on on east main where they would it was therapeutic right so i don't know how that would fit in okay Okay. Did anyone think of any other business categories that we missed? <laughs> I, <don't think> so. <laughs> I gave up on trying to keep this list short. <laughs> Municipal. Municipal uses. And just looked around and said, "Hey, where are we now?" Uh, I just we just have an open spot there. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fill in with something. Okay. 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 These are the attributes that Maybe across the yes. On, just when I, when I'm looking at the at the zoning map, we say business categories for all zoning districts non-residential. We have residential A, residential B, residential lakefront. Mm -hmm. But on the map, the largest portion of our town is agricultural. Mm -hmm. So are we applying these to the agricultural as well? I originally wasn't intending to, but then last meeting <coughs> we discussed adding all the agricultural uses for, because they're business uses as well. Mm. So the agricultural district is a residential district. It's not a... Right, but, it, but that's not well, how it's, it's defined. Like half and half because it's not how it's defined on our zoning. Well, the name, the name doesn't necessarily signify the major use that's there. Remember major we tried to change that? That's right. We tried to add the word residential? residential. Major you use is residential. One. That was but fun. I'm, I'm just, when I'm looking at this matrix now, when you say all zoning districts non-residential, and I look at this map, I would say that it's everything except for residential A, residential B, and residential lakefront. Okay. These apply to everything else. And that's how I would interpret that. So you, you want it to be excluding agricultural? Well, I mean, well, since okay. agriculture on this map is mostly residential, I would think that we're, I don't think that we're trying to apply these to the agricultural zone. What I think... Do you understand I think, well, my, you're definitely, I, but the thing is, there there are business uses allowed in the agricultural district, right? We did the doggy day here last year to make sure that if people did do a home-based business, that they had to size. Remember that? Or was that two years ago? Size and and all the uh, all the other constraints. Um, you know, and there's some other ones. I think Funeral it's homes. important to go back to the original question that we were devising the matrix for. 
which I think was to look at the business districts. It was. And although some business uses are allowed in agricultural, I don't think we're looking, to Ron's point, I don't think we're looking at agricultural or residential when we're considering okay, good. these uses and whether or not there are things we want to support. I don't think we're looking at the residential or agricultural side. So I think it, I think it should be excluding residential and agricultural. Okay. I think that's more, that's more consistent with the, direct, the discussions that we've been having. But that, that is why I originally didn't include agricultural business uses. Mm -hmm. But point. because... Well, I think at least, I don't know the exact definition of an agricultural business use. Uh, that at least fits in the rest of the stuff. But uh, 48 agriculture, horticulture, floriculture, and viticulture, maybe that comes under agriculture only zone and that Right. not be listed as an industry here. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to make this matrix consistent with what this map says. And when I look at this map, it's mostly green, which is agriculture. Yeah, yeah. I just and want to clarify. Huh? So agriculture is a Dover Amendment use, and it's allowed everywhere. So you can regulate agriculture on five acres or less, but agriculture per se is allowed everywhere, regardless of zoning district. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait, wait, I have a quick question. Sorry. So I, I always thought Dover Amendment was just educational. No. So what other uses? Daycare, um, education. Um, I have to pull it up. Oh, okay. So there's more. Okay. I didn't realize that. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to put a ca uh, column. Agricultural, for Dover religious, Amendment. educational. Yep. According to Wikipedia. Dover. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Fast. Which is the beginning and end of all discussions. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, agricultural, religious, and educational. Okay. And I guess Includes daycare child is care. Yeah. educational. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the purpose here is to look at how things fit into the business districts that we have, industrial business. Um, we'll leave in the agricultural line because that is something that Rhea was, was talking about and she's not here to defend the reasons, it's not going to hurt us either way to have right. this. You know, we, we, we know how much, how much we have so, in town and, exactly. and, if, and what it brings. But, uh, but yes, our, our intent was to focus on the business districts and to making sure that we're... Now, if I may, because I missed some of these uh, mm -hmm. when I was out last week, um, are, we, are we going to fill in now to you know, each of the businesses that we have in each of these categories, or no? Um, what I, and I'd like to use an example line, um, and I think if we do it all together, um, I think we maybe would understand how how to do it consistently. You know? so, oh, good. Okay. But let's let's quickly go through the attributes we have across the top and make sure that we think that that is complete. Okay. Um, so tax revenue. That's. Um, and this is, these are all going to be on a relative scale, so high, medium, low, in comparison to other things. So tax revenue would be, and it's always, you know, relative to the square footage that you're using, you know, the, the land mass that, you know, is, is, is being used for this particular business. Is the tax revenue high, medium, or low contribution to town, okay? Job numbers job skills, so high, medium, low in that case would be highly skilled jobs, medium skilled jobs, low skilled jobs. And potentially that also, I don't know what jobs local means. I didn't either at home, but I think it means how many jobs does that create for people locally? Yeah, I think Oh, okay, so that's where our- oh, When I was working at home, I couldn't remember what Yeah, that. that's what our spreadsheet, you know, the, the, the Lane got for us. Um, that's where that, you know, fit with local jobs, fit with local population. Okay? Does that make more sense? Mm -hmm. So two weeks from now when you're looking at it, you might remember what it Maybe. means. <laughs> Back to tax revenue. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Is, is, is the tax revenue that we're looking for here the assessed value of the, of the property? And how does the type of business going to affect the assessed value of a piece of property? Go ahead. Most, most businesses are just 
the value of the property that the business is on and the building. But some businesses are taxed on their personal property in the building. Hotels generate additional revenue if you put a local sales tax on it. So the ba I think the basis for the, the tax statement is, it, does it do anything more or less than what the standard is, which would be just the real estate value and the building value, just like everyone else. Religious facilities don't pay real estate. So would that be a medium? So would a standard be medium? And then that would be my interpretation Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, yeah. And I if you the church, it would be low because, and correct me if I'm wrong, they don't pay taxes. But we're not trying to assess the value of um, what what the employees are going to do in terms of uh, no. spending money and time or doing any of those things. No, I no, think because just that's going to be under drives revenue to other businesses or things like that. So tax revenue of you know of the business itself is that what you're? Yeah, you know? to, to the point that Carol raised is I. I person I don't have any knowledge of, of how I assign other values to a particular business other than what the assessed value is of Wikipedia. <laughs> well I think any office pays on their personal property. Elaine could probably give us a quick rundown on who pays what, but the the TIF that we just did, mm -hmm. if they're considered manufacturing, they don't pay taxes on their inventory, I don't believe. So you can look up what uh, people are paying by looking at the property record card for each parcel. So if you wanted to go to the assessor's the database on the website, you can go to a parcel, see what the assessed value is there. Yeah, but that... And would, so you can get an idea of value, of, and it also indicates personal property. But using the TIF as an example, because that's you know the best information I have <laughs> right now, um, there was, for one, um, with a new business, there's um, uh, leasehold improvements um, that would increase the value, the assessed value. So that would be a plus beyond just the property sitting there. Well, that's where they got their break on because they still have to pay their basic tax. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying is that businesses in that category that are likely to improve the property they're going to pay more taxes than if the property stayed vacant. Mm -hmm. Okay? Unless we grant them a TIF, in which case <laughs> yeah, they Yeah, I know. I know. No, 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 but it would still say, it would say a medium. It would uh, stay. And, and with an asterisk, because it's only a medium for a, a, a period, of time. period of time. Well, even, even if the building is vacant, you're still getting real estate taxes on the building and the property, mm -hmm. regardless of whether anything's happening in mm -hmm. the facility. Yeah, but then, but then, we have, then we have blank, 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 blank. I, I would say all of those are medium unless they generate more than... No, 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 no. What, I, what, I, what I'm saying is the job numbers, job skills, jobs, oh, yeah, yes. all of those stay blank, and, and that's where we lose a lot of money if, as a town. Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. That's very true. So, so the idea on tax revenue, and this addresses, you know, one of the things that we were talking about, Ted, because I don't, I don't know, you know, each and every business and what kind of tax revenue it's going to generate. But it's it, this is all relative. So we know for f from um, Elaine that a place of assembly or worship, that's their tax exempt, right? If it's a religious institution, yeah. yeah. So that one would automatically be low. Or zero. <laughs> yeah, but we're doing it on a, a relative scale, high, medium, or low. So. We've, we've just established that medium is going to be a property or property and building sitting vacant and just having the base, that's the baseline real estate taxes, right? And high would be a business that would generate additional tax revenue through personal property, which basically is, means equipment, right? Equipment that they're using in their facility. So manufacturing is going to generate more taxes from that. And what is, is, I don't know that that's true. I'm not sure that if you're not classified as if, manufacturing. If the state classifies them as manufacturing, then their personal property is exempt. Okay, so manufacturing doesn't. But not every, not all manufacturing is classified as manufacturing by the state. <laughs> okay. What, 
what determines the state's <laughs> classification? Do you have any idea? No. Well, I have to look it up. <laughs> Okay. So it's not so it's not an obvious. If, if tax revenue is important, uh, is there any chance we might ask the assessor to come and give us a a primer on yeah how how, how properties are assessed in town? Either that, or you can skip the and, column, and I'm happy to look it up and yeah, and put we could do that as well. If we if we feel yeah. like anything's and you know that's the thing, you know, when each of you are filling this out, you can say I don't know enough about this, so I'm going to leave this one blank. You know, so if if you feel more comfortable with that, that's fine. But I do feel like each of you is going to have opinions on some of these categories. So, um, and it's the the most important thing is that you're internally consistent. So if you're looking at job numbers, it's like hi for this. You're relative to the other categories, relative to the other business categories. Is this high, medium, or low number of jobs? You know, so. You're, you know, somebody might say high, somebody might say medium, but they're probably going to be internally consistent in that the, the, the other things are going to be lower, you know, on somebody's scale. It's, it's, um, so that's, that's the important thing. Um, I'm trying to think. Some of the other things that we can automatically say are going to be low for educational facilities, right? Mm -hmm. Would be low? Charity, philanthropic. Yeah. Philanthropic. Um, Sorry, uh, just a quick question. So I know educational facilities are covered by the Dover thing and all that stuff, but what, what are uh, a, a private uh, swimming school or a goldfish swim school or something, what category would it come under? Do they... Would they count as educational? If it's a business, mm -hmm. then it would be taxed as a... Or it could be indoor business. recreation. Like regular business. Oh, mm -hmm. in classes. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. And health facilities, most of the time, are non-profit or for-profit? They're profit. I mean, I think they're for profit, but <laughs> sometimes they're classified as non-profit. Um, Animal shelter would probably would most likely be a non-profit. Mm -hmm. Yep. But then the animal boarding, for instance, and an animal hospital, those are commercial enterprises. So, so they'd be medium. More likely. More most yeah. likely to be yeah. medium. Yep. So, any other ones that are most definitely? Well, no, so, so obviously, some businesses can, can get the designation of nonprofit, you know, depending on, uh, and they might fall into, you know, f for instance, riding stables. If they're primarily commercial, they're going to be more taxable. But if they're primarily a therapeutic. Um, Municipal uses have no tax benefit. Okay, I'll, I'll put that one too. They collect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Museum. Museum is probably not a problem. Right? Mostly. Mostly. Yeah. I suppose I can open the museum in my basement. <laughs> yeah. You guys to check that. <laughs> so numbers of jobs, again, high, medium, low, relative to the other business categories. So you're just thinking relative. So, um, job skills. Um, the jobs fit with local populations, so that would be reference back to the spreadsheets that Elaine has provided. Town image. This can obviously cover a lot of different things, but it's really your impression of would this be beneficial to the town in terms of image. So it's really a personal, very subjective thing. Okay? Quality of life. I think it's easiest to think of examples of low, <laughs> like, oh, we wouldn't want that in our town kind of thing. <laughs> um, but, um, but most probably would fall into the medium and, you know. Health services could be high. Health club could be high, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you also may, may even think of some things that um, are amenities that would be added benefit to have in town versus going to another town as as high versus versus what they you know if we don't have that amenity in town it's you know it's a pain if we don't have any restaurants in town yeah you know it could be considered high to have a restaurant in town you know, so and drives revenue to other businesses um, to a certain extent that's linked to the numbers 
you know, if there's a lot of people coming to a particular um, plant or, or manufacturing facility or office facility, um, they're likely to bring money that they'll spend at gas stations, at restaurants, at possibly other things, possibly hotels even. You know, so if we, if we had those facilities. It would also depend on how much money their employees would be making. Yep. Because if exactly. it's something with a lot of jobs, but they're not making a lot of money, they'll most likely be bringing their lunch or whatever from home, so they won't be eating at the restaurants. So it'd be linked to job skills and job number. Yep. Okay. So those are all the potential contributions to town, high, medium, low, okay? With high being better. Um, the next set of attributes that we've defined are the resource uses, um, which, you know, is, I mean, pollution is not a resource use, but <laughs> I think you get the point is that if it's high, that's bad. <laughs> so, um, so the first uh, few are traffic, so it's, it's road use, essentially it's road wear and tear, and traffic, which is a quality of life issue. Um, so we divided these between rush hour traffic, um, off-peak traffic, and truck traffic, because different businesses will, will drive different types of traffic. And it would be traffic for workers coming to the business as well as consumers going to a business. All right? Okay. Um, water use, sewer use, utilities, those may be something that we don't have a lot of knowledge about. Um, so you can use, um, if you have special knowledge of certain things, you know, for instance, laboratories and research centers might require more water usage. It depends on, on the business. Some manufacturing uses might require a lot of water usage, for instance. But this is something that we might not be able to define very well. So. It's just something we probably want to keep in mind. Um, town services, safety, etc. Parking needs. Um, and that, you know, again, saying that, that a particular place has a high parking need because of a high number of um, employees and or a high volume of customers does so like not necessarily hall? mean... Like town hall? Yeah, town hall. <laughs> That's right. Um, it does not necessarily mean it's terrible, but it's just something we should define, you know, so. Um, Pollution, so it's air, water, environmental impact, essentially. Uh, noise, specifically outside the building, because any noise that's contained inside the building, oftentimes restricted by our bylaws or by special permits and that sort of thing, um, is really not an impact on the neighbors and abutters, so it really shouldn't be considered in my mind. Any? Anything I haven't thought of? No. Okay. No, go ahead. My question's okay. a couple of columns over. All right. <laughs> Competes with other town businesses. Obviously, I don't know. I don't know. Have if we some competition. Well, th 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 that hit. I remember when um, the new. Uh, Dry cleaner? No, our old age facility. What the, the, the um, uh, over 55 facility that, that just opened up? Yeah. Um, Yes. And uh, when they were coming, I think we were. In, I was on the planning board still back then. And people came in and said, "Well, why are we going to let them open? We already have one in town." And I don't think people understand that we can't say no to a business that wants to come in and open up. And actually, we want to say yes to as many businesses that want to come in if they if they're in the right place and and you know, the right business in the right places. Plenty of customers. But that's why I'm wondering why we can why we're putting competes with other with other town businesses again it's not a reason to say anything against it it's just defining how these because we're trying to encourage you know sort of like with with um, 
the uh, the new company that we just gave a TIF to, you know, we're trying to encourage other laboratories and stuff to come to town, and even if they compete. Does anybody feel like this would differentiate any of the business categories from one another? Just looking through the list. <laughs> I don't really see where it would be necessary. But I don't. I don't think, from a zoning perspective, we necessarily want to encourage, like, say, this would be a great use in this district when we've got twelve other of the same thing elsewhere, like dry cleaners, yeah. which is the only thing that immediately comes to mind. We have oodles of them, so I'm not sure that we want to throw that into South Street as a good use for South Street. Right. So that's so in, in that, that instance it might make a difference, but to to John's point, if the dry cleaner wants to open on South Street and it's allowed on South Street, then Yep. And it's next door to another one or another pizza place. Yeah, it's certainly like not store. something we would disallow for people. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is more of a, a question of yeah, what what do we want to encourage through zoning? Mm -hmm. um, so Oh, well, I just remember when when um, CVS came in over there, my wife was saying, why can't we get a Trader Joe's? Get us a Trader Joe's. I really want a Trader Joe's. I said, it's not up to us to pick the company and say, we want you. <laughs> it's if they want to invest in us. Yep. Very true. I'm with your wife, though. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, it would have been fun. Okay. Very and then nice. this, this uh, I just threw in the Dover Amendment that... And we don't have to fill this in ahead of time. We can we can fill it in later. Um, of what is covered under the Dover Amendment? You, you <laughs> skipped the column. I had a question about though. The blank one. First impression. No, I was going to come back to that. Okay. Our first impression, as in each and every person's first impression, not talking to the, <laughs> not talking to your neighbors. <laughs> of what zone should this particular category be in? So. Okay. Oh. So that's not a yes or no. That's a it's not a yes or no. Industrial A or B or downtown business. Yes. Um, yeah. So I A or none. I B. <laughs> <laughs> D B. R B. Right. Rural business. Yeah. B R. I don't know why you would call it B R. <laughs> we already had an R B for residents. <laughs> <B. laughs> the residential districts came first. B. Office park. Office Park OP is that what it is? <laughs> and it says Office Park. I don't know what the uh, oh, office park abbreviation park. is. Professional Office Park is it P is it OP or P? It is for Professional Office. The Office Park doesn't really exist P. anymore. It's only a small landlocked piece that used to be um, um, where the development is the 110 Grill yeah. that area. So that's that's pretty. Oh, much that's gone. why that's still there. Mm -hmm. That's pretty okay. Because it now. used to be okay. I was wondering why it was there. <laughs> okay, so. I missed one. Downtown business. Oh, business. Just the regular business. <laughs> business is just a regular. Okay. Is that it or agricultural? <laughs> or not at all? No agricultural. No agricultural. Right. And we can list more than one, right? If you think it belongs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Dover Amendment covers agricultural. Ah. Because now I'm looking at manufacturing and said, wondering if manufacturing is it large manufacturing, small manufacturing, or assembly. You know, if somebody's putting together little teeny widgets and you know they can do it, they're doing it in their garage. Let's think about Apple. You know, they was they started in a garage. You can split into three if you want. So the last thing we're going to do, but we're not doing it. Each of us not is not doing it ourselves and we're not going to do it ahead of time before you've done this this rating is put the the district it's in right now but i don't want people to have that in front of them when they're doing these ratings because that kind of defeats the purpose <laughs> no because i remember that's what you were saying what's what's already on we were talking about south street and you said well we've already got a huge mix like, already. Yeah. <laughs> you know, why would you know, It's true. But we need, we need to, like, clear our minds of what it is and really think about just the categories. Like, as if we were creating these districts anew. It's 1950 again. Yeah, there you go. So, 
is the plan for us all to go out and fill this chart, come back next time with it filled, or are you going to try and consolidate responses? It would be really great if you guys could email me your completed charts prior to the next meeting so that I can then, what I will do is I will fill in each box with high, high, medium, low, based on, you know, the ratings of every single person, okay? And then we can discuss them. And if we, because, you know, just because, you know, Carol said low on a particular one, maybe after the discussion she's like, yeah, you know, I'm leaning more toward medium on that one now. And so we, we can change it, and we can change it to a consensus. We can leave it as the distribution. If people have very disparate views on it, that's cool, too. Could we do a couple as a group to yes. establish a baseline? Mm -hmm. We could do that. Would um, you like to do that now? I have a question, too. Yes. Also in, um, like, manufacturing, but also laboratory research centers, could we make our own, like, subcategories? Because I used to work in, in medical research, for example. Mm -hmm. So when I think of research, I think of a hospital. Mm -hmm. But I know that there are also some scientific companies that are much, much smaller. Like my husband works for a company that's like a hundred and something people. Yeah. So in my mind, like I have a hard time picturing because I'm like, well, a huge research facility like the one I used to work at would have very different answers than, you know, the one my husband works at. So then maybe we should split it into two, you know, yeah. large and small. Yeah. We can just like that. to John. When I was trying to do this before, I had the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. It seems to me if Mass General decided to move to Hopkinton, that would be a whole different situation than if we got a branch of the Metro West Health Services. It would mean a whole different thing for uh, quality of life and town image. Uh, similarly, Project Just Because is very different from the World Wildlife Fund. So <laughs> part of the struggle I had was well, how much traffic does it generate? Is it better call Saul, one lawyer and a woman sitting at the desk in front? Or is it Sokolov Law Agency with how many lawyers it has? So I don't have an answer to that, but that was part of my struggle when I tried to do this homework. Mm -hmm. okay. is I kept writing low to high and began how big a business it is. Yeah. So what I think of um, with either an office space or with a research space is that if you think of the job numbers, it's, it's about density. It's about how many people are in a lab. Um, and you can multiply that by 10, because it's a, a lot of labs all together. But the density is pretty much the same. They're going to have a space at their lab bench, and they're going to have um, some office space. And same with lawyers, yeah, for instance. You know, just, you know, there's going to be a certain square footage per, per number of people. And we're talking about square footage on certain, you know, on certain pieces of land, some plots, you know, of land. Um, for the most part, most of these types of buildings were, are going to have a little bit of green space around them, just to make it pleasant to be there. You know, um, but it's the density in there that we're talking about. You know what I mean? I think so. That doesn't necessarily answer for me. And I'm not trying to be the one. No, no, that's I good. just want to know how to do this one. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily answer for me um, how many jobs are being created. Yeah. To say that the density of a law office is the same, but one law office has three employees, one has 300, potentially. I have, so there are categories where I'm really, I kept writing low to high in my head, meaning depending on how big it is. Yeah. Project Just Because and Amnesty International are two different nonprofits. Yeah. Right? And I don't know. So I, I went through the same issue when it, I, because everything is generic, so you can actually think of it in any scale. So in my head, I was going for the averages. So if it ran low to high, medium was what I was going to put in. But I don't know if it will work for everything. The first few that I saw work for that. Maybe I don't know. Can we go with averages for? So and that's why I propose let's do a couple. Let's yep. Establish a group kind of baseline for okay. how we're thinking about these things. Yes. Sure. And I'll mostly listen because I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of some little, uh, good example ones. So. I would suggest Office General because everybody's somewhat got an idea in their head what that means. Okay. 
as opposed to like a laboratory. I have no idea how many people go in a lab. <laughs> it depends on the type of lab. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Um, okay, Office General. So, Carol, why don't you start? I, I would say that is a higher tax revenue generator because it, all the equipment in there is taxable, it's personal property. Okay. Um, job number density. I would say it's medium. Job skills, medium to upper. Um, I think it's high in terms of fits with the local population. I think it's kind of neutral on the image. I don't think it, I think it's neutral on quality of life. Um, I would say it's higher on driving revenue to other businesses. Let's stop there for a second um, and just, you know, discuss some of these things. So, so your rationale for the higher tax revenue is, is because, you know, it, it does have any of the equipment inside an office was, is going to be. It's, it's not taxes. just yeah. the land in the building. Right. Okay. But, but why is that different than most of the other ones on this list? Um, daycare is not going to have the computer equipment that an office would. Who isn't? A daycare. I don't think they would. Absolutely. They're, I mean, they're doing all their registration, all their account records. It's all computer driven. It's computer driven, but if you have an office taking up, say, town hall size, everyone that's working in that building has a computer and has their stuff. If you're in a daycare, you've got maybe two computers doing the administrative stuff. Right. I, I would argue that daycare might be low. But office would be medium. Office and is like that would be internally consistent then, because if she would <clears throat> put daycare as medium and office general as high, it's still the same, essentially the same relative difference. Well, we, I think we're trying to establish a baseline. Yeah. <clears throat> What's the baseline? Which I think would make your job easier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There. Right. So. I don't know. I would say that daycare is low because I agree with your assessment. Daycare is low. But then that's why I like none for the educational, the nonprofits, because it's lower than low of this. Zero. Do they pay property taxes even? No. No. Uh, so to me, I think it's worth saying none of those so that we can mm -hmm. have a But did you say educational facilities? Nonprofit education. I, I think I. Yeah, I'm not sure what I said, but I mean nonprofits. Right, I and mean, there are plenty of educational sure, facilities sure, sure, sure. that are for, for profit that I, would. I don't know what I said. We'll have to go to the record. But yeah. I meant, <laughs> <laughs> meant nonprofit. Okay. Um, can I ask something just for clarification? Um, because I didn't know this. So everything that's inside of a business is taxable? Mm -hmm. You have to pay property taxes on the value of the the equipment that you use in your business. So if you had like a, a medical office that had CAT scans and MRIs and something mm -hmm. really expensive machines, they pay a lot more tax? Yes. Unless they're nonprofit. Okay, okay. No, I didn't know that. Is, is my understanding, but I can look that up. Okay. If that's true, I'd go with Ron. We can call an office medium because they don't have CAT scans in there. That's got to cost a fortune. <laughs> okay. Well, the other thing is, I'll, I'll well, now that we have none, see, I was leaving low for the the no guys. But if you if you want to have none, yeah, let's have a none. Mm -hmm. I think that's reasonable. So I'm just going to put a zero in for the museum and things oh, like good. that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh. okay. So you can you can move it to medium. Okay. Oh, that which the uh, tax revenue. Good. Tax now revenue we have a baseline there. So okay. yeah. All right. So we have a baseline for tax revenue. Now let's have a baseline for job density. So and if we want to compare office general and daycare, we can do that, too. We can look at those two. Yeah, because okay. daycare, would, daycare it's, it's would be an L2 also. Medium? Medium for density? For density? No, they would be low. Well, they think they low? need they one, low too. one staff person for every five kids or something. I mean, oh, so it could be high? Oh. Yeah, well, it depends on the size of the... But 
again, in my mind, I'm looking at a building this size and and how many kids are you going to have in the, you know, as opposed to little cubicles. A lot of people that pull in the next generation every day. Oh, yeah, yeah there's kids. A lot of kids that. there. But no, but I'm saying no, if, no, no, if, no, you, if you need one that. staff person per five to, well, to, to agreed. comply yeah, with the Yeah, I don't think it's low. But it also depends on the age of the child because infants have to have, by law, um, like you can't have one person watching five infants. Right. I think you have to have like so one to I, I two or one to three. I think, I think it would, job density would be medium. I think it would be medium. Okay, I, I, I retract my thought. <laughs> so, you know, when I think of low job density, I think, you know, a, funeral home? A, a warehouse, you know. An automated have, warehouse facility. You know, a large space with yeah, I guess, a few you know, employees. Doesn't have that many people. Or <laughs> yeah, retail. that's what I think. So job skills, the, the Sales medium? Person and an job skills, medium? Medium to low? Medium? Medium to low, I think. For which one? Daycare. 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 Now, that's a tough one because I don't want my, my I was saying stuff that I don't want my wife hearing me saying, oh, that's low. But, you know, <laughs> you're, putting, you're putting the most valuable the most valuable things in your life in, into a facility. You hope that they're highly skilled. So when I was doing teaching. my rough draft of this, part of me was factoring in the education level you need to do that job. Yeah. Uh, I do think that I want my daycare provider to be highly skilled in dealing with kids, but I don't think you need a whole bunch of education necessarily. No. Um, I don't know if that's the way to think through it, but that's the way I was thinking of job skills, is the education needed to do that job. Yeah, I, know. I would agree. That, that also comes into mind, like for instance, in the case of a daycare, the daycares that are in Hopkinton are on the higher end of the cost scale. They are not the lower end of the cost scale. So the employees there will also be a little bit more educated than you would expect in a lower end facility. So potentially, yeah. I would go for medium by personal perception, but mm -hmm. okay, good. Good point. So jobs fit with the local population? Yeah. Medium? Medium. Medium. And I certainly think that we could See, we could thing. staff a daycare facility completely from people from Hopkinton potentially because you know, so that's the thing. So my thing is, if you're thinking about Hopkinton, especially after the education uh, survey thing that we saw, most of Hopkinton is highly educated. Mm -hmm. Highly educated are not going to go for a working daycare, in a daycare working in a daycare. So I would think local would be L in this case. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, that's a good, that's a, Wait, wow. Wow. Okay. That's a one weird, weird, yeah, I guess. That's coming out from the other side. That's true. Town image? Neutral? Medium. Neutral. Yeah. Medium is neutral. It's good to have, <laughs> it's good to have some. It's good to have them. Yes. You know, because, because that's one of, the, one of the main things people quality need to life. go to. Yeah, yeah it's, it's absolutely high. quality of life high. Yeah. I would say high for quality of life. Because yes, you, you get know, to that's you know, an amenity that drop people off your kid for. quickly to get to work. That, that's a con I agree that it's high in terms of quality of life, but I don't think it's high in terms of image for the community. Just uh, it's medium. Yeah. Well, it's medium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And drives yeah. revenue to the businesses? No. no. Medium. Because I used to be one of those people pulling into next generation, dropping her off. Oh yeah. Jump back in the car, get right to work as quickly as possible. Now, why would you go medium on drive revenue yeah, to other businesses? Because it's average. Because by having a daycare in town, mm -hmm. it um, it is an amenity to people working in town, and that means they're keeping, they're staying local. They're Stopping at daycare. They're going to work nearby. No, I still drove to Andover. <laughs> <laughs> that was my rationale. Though. Am, I, am I not making any sense? Well, it it's makes sense. That's not the way I looked at it. I looked okay. at it like you're living in Hawkinton. You're dropping your kids off at the convenient daycare. Yeah. And you're driving off to work wherever it is you're working. Okay. And I don't see us driving a lot of <laughs> revenue because. <laughs> I'm sorry? On average, average 37 minutes. minutes away. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't see you picking up your kids at the end of the night and going down to Price Cornell's. Chopper to go shopping or Cornell's or... or okay. 
Mm -hmm. That's, That's, That's reasonable. Conditions. Absolutely. That's why I would rate that lower. You would rate it lower. Yes. 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 But you would rate it lower. So it's kind of skewing. Yeah. Though. Because I see it as pretty low pay. Low, low would pay. be my guess. Unfortunately, yes. Actually, that's a good one to bring um, up. So yeah, so I definitely can see the rationale. Mm -hmm. Low, medium. So. Okay. Okay. So. Do you want to do more of this? Yeah, let's get the baseline. Okay, sounds good. Just carry so, these two out. And that just these two. Right, yeah. I think that gives us, yeah. That it, gives us all something to reference. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. We're on road, road use. use. Road use, off, okay. Okay, we're at so I think, rush hour. I think they're both high. Both high. Because you have, you're, you're trying to drop off the kids with the bus. Definitely and daycare. daycare. <laughs> I would agree with that. Ooh. Well, so, and, and most offices are going to yeah are, are going to be yeah, sure. makes rush sense. hours yeah if you think sure. of big intense. office building mm -hmm. off peak low low mm -hmm. I don't think daycare is low off peak I think there's no. a whole lot of pick up at noon and drop off at noon especially at least that was my experience we had a whole lot in the middle of the day and there were whole classes yeah. shifting and coming back in uh -huh. I agree okay but to to me, off peak means it, it's throughout the day off peak. Where I would I would look at a uh, a, a doctor's office as being high off peak mm -hmm. use because I mean they're they their appointments booked the entire day. There's there's not a uh, there's there's not a peak at the beginning of the day, the end of the day, and even the middle of the day, that would, to me, would be rush hour. Something that's got appointments all through would be I agree. Well, I agree. I agree. They would be hot, I'm, at the same I'm time, thinking but, daycare yeah. would be medium. Yeah. Because it's, it wouldn't be low off peak, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be as high as a doctor's office or okay. a supermarket it, it's off weird. peak. It, the daycare, I think, comes in spurts. The doctor's yeah, office is two cars in, two cars out, two cars in all day long. Yeah. The daycare is 11.30, 15 cars in, 15 cars yeah. out. Yep. And then nothing for a couple of hours. Right. Agree. Uh, right. Potential. But office parks right. are the same thing. At, at, at uh, between 11.30 and, and 1 o'clock, everybody's going to run it out for lunch. That's true. So is that a rush hour? I don't know. Are we creating a, a third section of rush hour, the lunch <laughs> hour? Uh, Could be. I'm not in That's, that's one. One had a good point there. I, 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 th I think of rush hour as beginning of the day and the end of the, end of the work day. But I, and then everything else is off peak. But I think that's why I bring daycare. I think it does generate substantial traffic off peak, but maybe not consistent the way it does. Yeah, not is. consistent. Yeah, I agree. But that's certainly true. significant traffic. So I could see somebody rating at either a medium or a high based on that this discussion, this this off peak piece here. Yeah. Right. So depending on the way you're looking at it, it could be a medium or a high. Okay. It, 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 this is this is the baseline, which so it's working out great. Okay. Truck traffic. Low. I think it would be low in both cases. Certainly yes. Low for daycare. Yeah. What, what about it? deliveries to office? Yeah, UPS that's deliveries. what I was going to say. Yeah, they, they definitely do, but I, I'm thinking... But that's usually good. Oh, yeah. But no, that, but that would be... Yes, but Amazon. also be like, if, you know, they're delivering UPS. to anywhere else in town, it would probably be all on the same truck. Yeah, there'd be yeah. UPS and that kind of stuff. I'm that's not all thinking the big day. trucks and... I, I don't know what kind of truck. Loading docks about. and yeah. stuff. When I did this before, I included ambulance and truck. Oh. So I don't know really um, what we're aiming for. So. I'm just thinking what, what kind of trucks would... Be higher um, well, office wear supply, and tear. You know, the Staples truck or the WB Mason truck is, could show up at the office sure. building five times a day because you've got 20 different businesses in there all putting right. their orders in coming in at different times. Oh. That could be a lot of truck traffic. Right. Huh. In it's, my school, it, we have WB Mason showing, and I don't have, I'm not a big school. There, I think twice a day, WB Mason, we got a vegetable truck once a day, we got the HVAC every other day seems like they got to show up in my school. Uh, so, so again, so yeah, I think if, there if are you've got multiple businesses, they're all placing orders separately, and they're they're getting their deliveries throughout the day. So, I, I would I would put the medium. the daycare as low and the office as medium. Huh. It, it's it's not an E.L. Harvey type truck traffic. Right, right. Yeah. 
but it's still okay. it's still a fair amount of truck traffic. Fair enough. Okay. And that water and sewer is supposed to come out to be the same? Water, sewer. I would say they're low. I think office is low. I don't know about daycare. No, 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 what I'm saying is I wonder if, we should, just, I wonder if we should combine water and sewer, because unless it's private sewer. Because, it, because water, in, that's, water in is water out. That's how we, isn't that how we build? That's how you is build them. true for manufacturing? Don't we build not every, Yeah, not every... It, um, it's built based so on every the sewer. place who has water service has also has sewer. So sometimes people are getting water but not sewer. That's oh, true. then how would we know? Does it <laughs> matter? <laughs> yeah. No, that's what I was just saying because yeah. that's how they yeah, built the sewer. I was yeah. How much water did you use? Okay, yeah, I was just throwing that one out there. That's like a gimme column. You don't want to leave it there just because, you know, if it's <laughs> low going in, it's low coming out. <laughs> That's what I meant, yeah. If they're all the same, then I'll combine them. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, and daycare, water, sewer? Well, you could argue there that sewer is lower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Depends on you. <laughs> I'm thinking medium. <laughs> okay. Really? I think they're both medium, medium. You think? Yeah, it's like just a daycare is low. Yeah, I, yeah, they don't stand out as one I mean, way or the other. Right, they don't stand out. It's not I high. don't think daycares use that much water, though, because the, most of the kids there... Well, standard, they they standard number of flushes or something. You know, it, 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 there's a... No, 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 for the daycares, I think they also have to have, uh, they have to wash everything uh, at the end of the day for the, uh, so that it stays germ-free. There are rules that they have to, they have to laundry certain things at certain times. They do the laundry things. at the daycare? Some of the stuff, not everything. They send the dirty blankets home. They oh. have to offload anything that it they can. It does seem like they wash a lot. Like, now, they wash granted, a lot. they might use, like, wet wipes all the time, but, yeah. um, but they do, I think they have sinks in every room for washing hands and things. Yeah, because so every time you walk into NGCC, no if you walk by the washer dryer know. thing, it, the low, you can hear the load running. So Maybe it seems like too. a lot. I, I like John's point of having the office general being medium on water and sewer as well, as, as being that it's it's not high, it's not low, it's just, it's just in, it's Standard. we're in the middle. Yeah, because yeah, okay. we have to know, yeah, it's. All right. In, in, in you know, somebody working in uh, somebody working in an office, and somebody working in a daycare, and somebody working in a in a trade shop, all probably. Um, and they would the use of the facilities the about the same. Yep. And that gives us room for car wash and agricultural uses. So clearly, water would be hot. So. Mm -hmm. Not if it's water efficient. Actually, no, that the, storage is low. Actually, car wash is now at, at up to like ninety-seven percent. <laughs> anyway, yeah. all right. All right. Utilities, same utilities. Like same with utilities, electric Medium. and gas. Yeah, <coughs> and heat. Yeah. Medium. Medium. I think those would be both medium. Any other thoughts on that? No. Okay. I feel like an office would be high. If you have all those computers going all the time, that draws a lot of power. Mm. Well, I, I, in, in my head, if I made that uh, high, would probably be uh, hospital, clinic, um, manufacturing. Yeah, manufacturing maybe um, what's something else. A medical marijuana growing facility would be high. Oh. <laughs> yeah, could be. It's hydroponic. <laughs> oh, because of the lights. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else would be high? Energy plant. Energy plants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see. I see. Hopefully, we don't get any of those. Yeah, they, they're all they're all in Billingham. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Police, fire, town services. Medium? Medium. 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 Parking needs. I'd say office I is think medium. it's high for daycare, personally. Well, it's only no, high for a minute. But daycare is a You're right, they turn, turn off. off. Yeah, it's right, a, it's it, they don't have people parking there the whole day. That's right. true. Yeah, medium, medium? Medium. Maybe, I don't know. Isn't there a reason that the, what's this place over there on the corner of 135 and Main Street? They have a huge parking lot. They mm -hmm. probably do that for a reason, right? Because when it is, it's time, drop, it's, it's, when it is time to pick up and drop because off. Because it's all the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Believe me, I remember. <laughs> so for a relatively small building, they have a relatively big parking lot. Does that make them a high parking? But do they need all the space? I don't know. Oh, yeah. 
They do. At the rush hour. At rush hour, yeah, because I used to have to park far away sometimes. Yeah, it sometimes late. it was impossible so to find parking. Was. Oh, yeah, because you have to park to walk to take your kids yeah, in. Exactly. You can't just drop them off like yeah. at school. Okay, yeah, I see. Would that leave daycare to be high for parking? Or no? That was my rationale. Yeah, so even though it's not being used all day, you still need it for those cr crucial times. Mm -hmm. But is it any more than a general office? I don't think so. So for that size building that was office workers, wouldn't you use that size lot? Sure. Here's what I remember from my kids in daycare. They were in a room about this size, mm -hmm. and there were always at least four teachers mm -hmm. in a room for this size. Mm -hmm. So if you had multiple rooms this size, the number of I mean, this is a small room, I think, for four people to share. Maybe it could be chopped up into four no, just, individual offices. Four right? individual offices, they'd be rather and large on top offices. Of that, the parent traffic, right? So it's the same as an office building, plus one well, parent traffic, putting pressure on parking. Mm. This is this is a huge space for four offices. I was going to say yeah, you could that's fit what I was a thinking. lot more in here. Like, wow, it's, especially the I way they're doing so offices now. Okay, okay. okay. So this this but is a very big space. If we had a bunch of rooms like this with four employees plus parent traffic. Is that more than an office, or is that the same? I don't know the answer. So um, my same. reasoning was like that uh, yeah, for parking spaces, there is like a oh, rule, like right? right? Uh, this That's many number of people, now. you have to Big provide this many parking cubicles. spaces and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But for a retail, you cannot, even if you do that, like it, you need more, like for a Starbucks, we always need more than what we can actually calculate. In these cases, you can calculate. For a daycare and uh, office space, you can calculate if the capacity is this much, this much parking needs to be provided. That's true. So that way, it, it seems a manageable number than versus something like a retail, which is an unmanageable number. So that's why I was, in my head, this went as a medium and that went as a high. So I don't know, but. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense because, again, we're saying, you know, the parking needs would be factored into the plot of land that any given business needs. And um, so they're, you know, they're paying real estate taxes on that parking. <laughs> um, but if it's an excessive amount that, that we think might outstrip the zoning, um, what are, you know, the, the rules, you know, the, the Parking, you know, you have to include this number of minimum spaces. That might be where we would use high for here. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. so I think everything else might be medium otherwise. <laughs> mm -hmm. huh? I'm, not I'm not sure really that parking is a... Something we need to think about? I don't think it's an issue because it's... That's all determined. You know, for this yeah. use you need... These spaces. Yeah, yeah, so it's, 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 yeah that's all. Not always determined correctly, but yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it changes where we put things or how we use them or. I think you, you got a point there. Or where you make the decision. I don't. It doesn't impact my decision. Yeah. They can either provide for the parking or they it? can't. What do you think? Yeah. You want to take it out? Is that what you said? Delete it. Yes. Oh, you, yeah. are you talking about deleting the column? I thought <laughs> I am just thinking of that. Oh, okay. Okay. Do, do you, does anybody want to keep it in? I, I think it's worth keeping it in as this exercise. Okay. If everything on that list comes in as a, at a medium, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. then, then we, pull then we delete the point. column. Yeah. But I, I think what, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for the outliers. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm looking exactly. for the, and the on patterns. The, on, the, on the one side, I, I want the things that you know, have a lot of tax revenue potential, and the other side, low impact of the community. Yeah. But most things are going to fit in the middle. Well, look at the next one, uh, funeral home, when it comes to parking. You know, every, there are those, those uh, wonderful people that pass that have a lot of people coming to see, and then there's... Never enough parking. Yeah. And you're waiting in line an, an hour or so. Uh, but then it's so as if a funeral home, you know, you know have a high demand for parking. Then that's a good question. Occasionally. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. So it doesn't really fit our whole low, medium, high. Right. No, we're talking about rating. outliers. I just said, okay, this is the next one. Yeah. Okay. Pollution. Uh, oh, come on, Cal, make the joke. Oh, look, the daycare or something. <laughs> no, no, I'm just going to usage with that one. I think low, low. I'm, I'm 
In favor of low, low. Yeah. Then what's a medium? I was gonna. I'm That's in favor question. of medium, medium because. Yeah. They're, they're neutral in my mind. They're not bad and they're not good. <laughs> <laughs> what would be low? If that were a medium, what would be low? Self storage would be low. I'm going to say... Oh, good point. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I see yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, yeah. And daycare, I, I think I'm voting for medium, but it could be higher than you think because there's a whole lot of idling your car while you go in and get your kid and keep your car warm. Um, but I still think it's a medium. I never left my car. You shouldn't be idling your car. <laughs> I wish nobody would have <laughs> Lots of people... Shut out off and you lock it, too. So <laughs> yeah. Lots of people are out there idling. No, there were a lot of break-ins at that uh, a few years ago at that... Uh, yeah. Oh, here's here's one that can differentiate. <laughs> Noise outside building. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> going in sometimes. <laughs> going in sometimes it was pretty noisy. Oh, where are we going today? <laughs> Office, would you say low or medium? Medium. 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 Okay. Competes with other town businesses. <laughs> I still don't understand. <laughs> I don't even know. Huh. So for hmm? would daycare be high since there are like three or four of them in our town? Well, I mean, no, it's it's medium. I mean, there we, there are plenty of office buildings in town, but that's an office building is just one of many. Daycare is one of many. There's not a glut of either. Oh, I guess. yeah, excess, yeah. I don't even know if this this oh, column uh, is going to mean anything ultimately. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to do your first impression of what zone is? No. <laughs> it has to be each of you individually. Oh, we should transparency. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's helpful to me. I'm okay. glad we did it. Yeah, I'm glad we did this too. This is not perfect. This whole this whole exercise, no, it's not perfect, but it's going to give us a relative sense of the consensus in this room. Are, are you going to forward this to yep. us with this baseline? With this information in it. Oh, good. I was going to take a picture. Now I don't have to. No, you don't have to. Actually, Elaine is going to forward it to you. This, this is not my computer. No, I am <laughs> going to come back over there. Okay, so, um, Elaine, if you could forward that spreadsheet. I made some changes on some of the top attributes and actually in most, most of the attributes in the business categories, I've made a few changes. Um, but if you could forward that to all of us um, as soon as possible after this meeting so people have a long time to work on it, that would be great. And then if each of you can return it to me. I will follow up with an email to everybody um, because you know we have two missing people too. Um, I'll follow up with an email to everyone, just kind of reiterating the whole um, the methods we're using, you know, relative and that sort of thing, and that you should return it to me ideally on the weekend before. Um, you know, like Saturday or Sunday before our next meeting, so I have a little bit of time to compile it. Okay? And if you don't have time to do that, that's fine. It's just, we'll, we'll deal with it as best we can. <laughs> All right. And just before you leave this topic, I did look up the unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. So in December, it was 2.1%. 2.1%. Wow. And also the wow. number of the citizen voting age population so 18 and over, who's a citizen, would be 11,455. Say again? 11,455. I was going to say how many are registered. Do you know when they do the unemployment rate, what age they're looking at? What age they're looking at when they count the unemployment? Uh, it's 16 and over. 16 and over? I had two unemployed in my house, both my daughters. I was going to say, I wonder <laughs> if it's actually less. They were 16? One turned 21 last week. 
21 and 17. I know. You don't see them. I think wow. they still got little babies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Um, I used to bring them to these. My, my, after bringing them, my, my younger one, to one of these, what, 12 years ago, she said, I, I, I never want to go to a meeting again. <laughs> to one of these? One of these, yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. My husband um, uh, was watching it on video, like, you know, one of our first few meetings, and, and made my son watch it, and he's like, <laughs> when I got home, it is so boring. <laughs> they don't do in government anymore. They don't make the kids come anymore to meetings, do they? No. <laughs> it scares them away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I gotta go sit in your meeting. <laughs> they say the same thing when they sit in business meetings. It's <laughs> not work. Um, okay, so. The other thing we're going to look at, and I, I confess I have not read through this entire best practices model for streamlining this local permitting, but, um, but I, I really do think that we need to each do so and take notes and, and highlight things that we think um, are useful for all of us to look at for, for Town of Hopkinton. But um, at the last meeting, we talked about getting some feedback from other um, committees and um, and just you know getting ideas about whether 43D that we talked about last time is something we want to look at, or whether it's more of an um, um, expedited permitting within um, you know, within all of our you know, not a 43D situation, but within everything that we do. Um, and if there's any specific things that anyone has heard from either businesses or residents about um, our permitting process that needs work. So, um, so Just, I'll let you start. On the streamlined local permitting from MARPA, mm -hmm. I mean, the date on this is November 30th, 2007. Mm -hmm. I'm just, it seems a little dated to me. There are a few things that have changed legal-wise since this, but for the most part, it's, it's good. It still would help. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm reading through this stuff you know, with a single point of contact and, and some of these other, some of these other um, recommendations are just great. And uh, the other question, uh, it, they listed the areas that were part of this, regional planning agencies. I'm just wondering which of these Hoppington is part of. Metropolitan Area Planning Council. MAPC. And who attends that? Uh, the town has a representative, I believe it's Claire Wright. And then I attend, or the planner, if, when we have planners, they attend the sub-regional meetings in our southwest. Okay. So, all right. Now back to the um, expedited permitting. I mean, the unanimous feedback from the chamber was time to, to permit is an absolutely critical thing in attracting businesses to the community. So anything that we can do to uh, help businesses navigate the labyrinth of zoning areas and getting through from application to, to permit would help us to attract more businesses to town. And we, we discussed the 43D as, a, as an option and, and the observations were well, why don't we try to identify one parcel and try, try it? it? Yep. Which I think it, I talked the, yeah. the parcel down off Main Street, the uh, Liberty Mutual mm -hmm. would be a fine parcel if you wanted to try it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what. But even some of these other things, you know, like single point of contact, a user's guide for local permit to local permitting. You know what I mean? That's something. Oh, we do have one? I was going to say, I thought, we, I thought we made one of those. Flow charts and checklists. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you know, it just makes, but, but have, makes, you know, so people know about it. You know, it's, you know, I, I do um, building permits in, in other towns, and um, Hopkins out of the part of this, this last one, but you, you put all your information into one town, and then you're, you're in for another 12. Well, 15 towns, so you just go in, you just drop a number in, boom, you get your building permit quickly. Um, you know, I'm, just, I'm sorry, you put it in in one town and it shows up in 
It would be put in at one time, and then all of your all of your your information, your 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 uh, bonding, your insurance, and everything else, it, it's already in the system. In so that one town. It, it, no, it, no, it goes over. It goes over another dozen different towns. So I, I, I did one in Watertown, and now I'm covered in, in like Ashland and, and Holliston and Hopedale, you know, of several other towns because they're, they're all in on this database. And it's just, it just good for, for contractors um, just on that side of it. You know, and there might be some more of these things that, that, that Hopkins can join up. Uh, do we have online? Um, We've tried, I think, three or four different vendors, and we have another one that I think we're looking at trying. Hard to find the right one. Mm -hmm. You know, we can fill out all your building permits and stuff online, send it right in, and then it's it's done a lot quicker, mm -hmm. and, we, and it doesn't use up town personnel as much that they have to you know look through this this handwritten one and make triplicate copies, and everybody gets one. And it just it's just a lot more efficient. I I did have a follow up question for you, Ron, and that was you know, you said time to permit is critical. Makes sense. Do uh, does the chamber in, have a sense of how we are compared to other nearby communities? Um, <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> there was in that report we had. Natick is is significantly worse than we are, mm -hmm. but we're we're in the same ballpark. Okay. It. it it doesn't have a reputation as being a business-friendly community. And the, the ironic thing is that ultimately, people that apply for permits generally get to what they, they're looking for ultimately. It's just the amount of time and the number of meetings and continuances that they have to go through that is extremely costly to uh, a small business person that's trying to get something done. Mm -hmm. And it, it does, you know, it just makes it hard. Okay. And it, I, I'm personally stunned that we have any vacancies at all on South Street or in any of our industrial zones based on the perfect location that we have here. And yet, we, almost every building on South Street has some vacancies in it. And it's just like, how is that even possible? Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is that it, it, we're perceived as being tough to do business with. Okay. And I'm, that's strictly coming from a, a, a business applicant, not, yeah. not, a, not a residential development, but for, from a business side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, even the, even the process for the TIF approval was long and hard. And, that, and, 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 and I thought we did, I thought we expedited it. And no, not the not the getting into town meeting, but the the time in town meeting and the the questions that were asked that really had no bearing on whether or not we should give them a tiff or. But we, but the, the zoning process can't control those types. Of things. No, that's, that's true. No, that's true. That's true. That's a t open town meeting is going to happen. But it, it, <laughs> If, if we, as, as John was saying, if we can take a look at some of these best practices, when I look at the, at the town website and go through the, the, the main things on the page, there's nothing in there about permitting, zoning, anything to do. So it's, it's just not, it's not welcoming or friendly. And that, that's just the starting point, to try mm -hmm. to find anything about it. You really have to, and this is the new website. Rio was talking about that too, about other towns and how easy it is to, to navigate through their yep. their web page. Okay, good. So I definitely want to spend a lot more time on this, but I think that all of us need to read the available materials and um, and you know make some notes about what we think are things that we can focus on. Um, I I think it would be really helpful, Elaine, if we um, if we got copies of the user guide that is available in Hopkinton now the, for for permitting mm -hmm. um, or any flow charts and things like that that we have um, and um, and I know that you know uh, one of the planning board members is is taken on a, 
uh, project of you know improving um, certain aspects of the website, the town website, in relation to planning board activities. Um, so, so this is something that we can we can utilize you know, as okay. the pathway to improvements. So. Mary, I've not taken this to Concom. We had one meeting and we started a half hour early because the agenda was so packed, and okay. then we stuck around after the senior summer should have closed. So I didn't try to bring it in. That's fine. I did email. Um, the chair, plus Don McAdam, plus Anna. Um, however, I won't be at the next meeting. I'll, I'll also, by the way, miss this next meeting. Um, so I said to Don in the email, if you guys want to discuss it, email me stuff. I can email it back to this committee from the Dominican. Or uh, they might put it off to the meeting following. I told them there's no real rush right now. I don't think we're about to do anything in the next week or two. But um, anyway, that's where I am kind of as far as discussing it. OK, thank you. Probably at the next meeting, um, we're going to be spending a lot of time on our matrix. Um, and we may, we may have a little time at the end to, to talk about you know, how, what people have, have been able to research on this expedited permitting topic. Um, but, uh, but I don't expect that we're going to do more than just you okay. know, have a very short discussion on it next time. So yeah, so anything you find out, you know, anyone else, including, you know, just talk to your um, local business people or um, or other business people that you know, you know, just uh, so to get get thoughts on permitting process, It'd be great. I've never had to go through it myself, so <laughs> okay. Um, we need to approve the minutes from last time. Anyone have any comments on them? They look fine to me. Right, they look fine to me too. Move to you got your name right, Ted? Well, Ted, I, I do look for my name every time. <laughs> Good. I didn't see any problems. <laughs> Good. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Extensions? Okay. We've approved something. Um, yeah, that was it for our agenda. And I'm going to go through the work plan um, over the next couple of weeks, too, to see if we can insert any other shorter I'll, you know, shorter term discussion items um, so we can keep feeding the planning board with stuff. Um, but, uh, but otherwise, these large projects, um, I really appreciate everybody doing homework outside because uh, th these are not the kind of things that we can just come to the meeting and discuss off the top of our heads and get anywhere. So it's really important. Thank you. Um, do we need to do, do the official? Closing the meeting. Do we want to talk about the meeting after the 18th? Mm -hmm. I think we only have one. Oh, we only have one. On the, yeah, yeah. Let's okay, let's confirm on. that. Thank you. Okay, so we have the 18th, and the next one should be April Fool's Day. <coughs> Is there any other um, town meeting that interferes? Town committee meeting? Uh, at this point, um, no. Okay, so. April 1st, okay for everyone? Yeah. What day is it on? Monday. Monday. Oh, Monday, okay, good, good. Okay. And the 15th? And then April 15th, no, that's spring Holiday. break. And yeah, and, and Patriot's Day, right? Mm -hmm. So we would not, not be meeting on the 15th. And tax day. And tax day, everything all at once. Okay. Not tax day here. Yeah, we got a bonus day again. I feel like every oh. year we're getting bonus days here. Seems like it. <laughs> Since Patriots Day is the third Monday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So twenty second, are we looking at? No, because that's a planning board meeting. No. So it would have to be the 29th. Is ninth. Cut a month off. No. Just about four weeks. Almost really. 29th okay. is the EHOP. Know your so vote. so soon. I need to plan college trips. Oh, yeah, we can't compete with that. No. I'll, I'll be at EHOP. I'll be at EHOP. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
better be. Oh my. <laughs> So April 29th works as well? No, that's no, it does not. It's what? It's no, your vote. Oh! <coughs> I don't even have it on my calendar. What do you mean? It should be on everybody. Okay, we're going to have to look at other days then, but... Um, Can we get a consensus at our next... Yeah, let's do that. Um, I can, I, yeah, I don't, I don't have my calendar well enough. Um, in late April to figure it out. What time does so it start? We'll talk it next, about it next time. What time does Know Your Vote start? Do you know? I, I think we'll, we'll do it on a Saturday night and we'll go to Apex and have a meeting there. That's a great I, idea. I know Ted loves that. <laughs> Carol, too. <laughs> <laughs> While we're doing service work in the Dominican, we'll get a fine meeting for me. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We are closed. <laughs>